So about a year ago, I made a video about interesting geographical and geopolitical quirks of Australia. And very recently, the YouTube algorithm decided that that would be a good video to show to a lot of people. So now a lot of people have seen that video and many of you left comments about other interesting facts about different parts of the world. So I thought it would be a fun idea to go through some of those comments, first fact check them, second tell you how interesting I find them, and then of course you can tell me how interesting you find them as well. So let's get going. So I ended that video by saying that I was mind blown by some of the relative positions of cities in my own country, which is Australia. And for example, I'm from Melbourne and it blew my mind that Perth is actually a little bit north of Sydney because that didn't fit into my mental map of Australia at all. And a lot of you gave examples of cities in your own country, which aren't exactly where most people think they are. And one of the most common ones was Edinburgh being west of Bristol. So first, let's fact check this. So of course, we're going to be using the infallible Google Maps for all of our super accurate measurements today. So if we scroll in to the island of Great Britain and find Bristol and find a central part of Bristol, this castle park is pretty central. We can see it's about 2.6 degrees west of the prime meridian. So let's see how west that is compared to Edinburgh, which is up in the north. And if we again select a central location here, about 3.2 degrees west. So yes, Edinburgh is further west by about 0 0.6 of a degree than Bristol. Do you find that surprising? Are you from the UK? For me, I don't have a very well-established relative mental map of the positions of the cities of the UK in my head, but I can see that the island is mostly oriented north-south, so it'd be very easy to assume that it's a straight line up to the north. But in reality, the island actually looks like it juts out to the northwest a bit. So yeah, it makes sense that the more northerly the city, the more westerly they also are. All right, next one. Oh, this one's so good. If you use the Panama Canal to go from the Atlantic to the Pacific, you go west to east. I'll show you what they mean by that. So here's the Atlantic Ocean over in the east. Here's the Pacific Ocean over in the west. And you want to go from the east to the west, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. But if we zoom in on Panama, you can see the country actually kind of makes this S shape, which means that the canals that you need to go through, the Panama Canal, which is actually a whole series of canals, to get from the Atlantic up in the Caribbean Sea here in the north, down to the Pacific, which is west of the Atlantic, down in the south, you actually need to go from a more westerly direction to a more easterly direction. You pop out here by Panama City. So yeah, to go from the Atlantic Ocean, which is in the east, to the Pacific Ocean, which is in the west, you actually need to go from west to east. Very cool fact. Next one. All right, the next couple are in Australia, but I promise that we are going to come back and talk about North America at the very end. So here we go. Adelaide is the closest capital city to Darwin, but Darwin is the furthest capital city from Adelaide. I love this one because it's so reciprocal and so counterintuitive if you think about it, that one thing can be the closest one direction, but the furthest in another direction. Let me show you what I mean. So if we find Darwin up in the north of the country and we measure a distance from Darwin to Perth, for example, we can see that it's approximately 2,654 kilometers. But if we measure towards Adelaide, we can see that it's 2,619 kilometers. So yes, Darwin is closer to Adelaide than it is to Perth. And if you measure Darwin to the other capital cities, Brisbane, 2,800 kilometers, Sydney, 3,100, all the southern ones, you can see that, yeah, Adelaide is actually the closest city to Darwin. But Darwin is the furthest capital city away from Adelaide. Adelaide to Darwin, 2,600. Adelaide to Perth, only 2,100. Adelaide to Brisbane, only 1,600 kilometers. And then all of the southern ones. Darwin is the furthest capital city away from Adelaide, but Adelaide is the closest capital city to Darwin. Very cool fact. Next one. So this is a bit of a long one, but what it says in a nutshell is that there's a little pocket of South Australia that is cut off at the border from a river that crosses the border from Victoria. I'll show you what I mean. So if we zoom in down here to the very southern border of South Australia and Victoria, down to the town of Nelson, which is a beautiful town, which you should visit one day if you get a chance, you can see that the Glen Elg River crosses over the border, cuts off this tiny little pocket of South Australia, and then goes back over the border, leaving us with this little tiny portion of South Australia that is totally inaccessible unless you either cross the river or cross the border to get there. Very cool. And I had a quick whiz around the rest of the map to see if there's any other parts of Australia where this happens. I actually expected to find one on the eastern part of the Queensland, New South Wales border. But as far as I can see, this is the only part in the country where a river actually cuts off a pocket like this. 
A lot of the state borders are in the very dry outback and there aren't flowing rivers for most of the year. But there is something really cool at the Queensland-New South Wales border, which is actually at the Gold Coast Airport in Coolangatta. So if we zoom into the border and we find the Gold Coast Airport, you can actually see that the runway straddles the state border. So what this actually means is when your plane lands, you're in one state. But then by the time your plane slows down and gets to the other end of the runway, you're in the other state. So that can happen whether you come from the south or whether you come from the north. But I thought that's a really cool feature of this airport. And my North American friends, you've waited to the very end of the video, but you get rewarded with actually my favorite fact from all of these comments, which is that the northernmost point of California is actually north of the southernmost point of Canada. So if we zoom into North America here, let's find a very northerly spot on California. What about right here on the west coast? We can see that this is 41.99 degrees north of the equator. Maybe it's meant to be on the 42nd, I don't know. So let's find the southernmost point of Canada, which is over here in the Great Lakes. You know what? We'll be generous. We won't even include this island. We're going to this peninsula here, which looks like it's definitely the southernmost tip. We'll see that it's 41.90 degrees north of the equator. So yeah, it looks like the northernmost point of California is actually 0 0.09 of a degree or, you know, basically 0.1 degree north of the southernmost point of the Canadian mainland. And how many kilometers is that? 0.1 of a degree is a tenth of a degree. If there are 60 minutes in one degree, a tenth of 60 is six. So it's six nautical miles, which is about 10 kilometers. So California stretches 10 kilometers more north than the southernmost point of Canada. Very, very cool. That is my favorite fact out of the comments that I've read so far. So thank you so much to everyone who commented and watched the video. Obviously, I couldn't include every comment in the video, but there are heaps more. And I know it's a bit cringe to shout out Google here while I'm on YouTube, but shout out to Google Maps. A few years ago, they introduced this globe projection on Google Maps, which you can play around on. It is so much better than the Mercator projection they had before. It inspired me to put a globe projection in all of my recent videos, which I do just using Blender and Natural Earth too. But if you just hit this little globe view icon, I can watch this wrap and unwrap literally all day. So yeah, shout out to you, Google Maps. Great job. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.